So I am uh, this is Brian McCracken with Works in Progress, and I'm here today with um, someone attending the strike here. Can you state your name, please? Yeah. Hi, my name is Alyssa Goss. Uh, and how are you? How are you uh, related to Evergreen here? And what are you doing here today? I'm related to Evergreen in the sense that I'm a senior here. I've been here all four years. Um, I came here from Houston, Texas, and um, I am a huge supporter of the staff union. Um, a reason I'm a huge supporter of it is because every facet of my education and my time here has in some way not just been touched by the staff, but significantly impacted. Um, mental, health mental health counselors, academic advising, admission counselors, first peoples, um, key trio, all of these folks, these people are on the front line of our experience here at Evergreen. When we have a question, we go to them. Because faculty are in the classrooms, that's who we work with. But all those other facets of being a student and that transformation of becoming a young adult, um, that happens with these support staff. And mm -hmm. um, I just support them wholeheartedly. Okay. Wonderful. And what, what are you studying here at Evergreen, Lisa? I'm studying international political economy. Do you see this as a, as a wider movement or, uh, or part of a wider attack on education? Can you tell a little, little bit about that? Definitely. Um, I mean, when I first started contemplating about why I support this, beyond also just the fact that I know a lot of these people personally, um, is realizing like my tuition's been increasing every year and what is that paying for? Um, and when those questions can't be answered and when you see other people having pay raises but you're not noticing the direct benefit to your education, it, it really makes me wonder. And I worked in the state senate for a while um, as an intern and just really seeing people's arguments for cutting funding to higher education and why they feel like they need to and then refusing to close tax loopholes um, and saying, well, we'll lose worker jobs. And it's like, we're losing worker jobs by cutting higher education. And just that lack of seeing the investment that higher education is and that education is, um, you can't think of it as, oh, well, if we fund it, uh, it's going to be this immediate turnover. It's something that is generational and we have to be thinking about as a long-term investment. What can people do to support um, these actions, support the staff at Evergreen, and also support a wider movement? I think the first thing is to ask questions and, and start talking to folks who are involved. Um, I think a lot of people will stay away or won't get as involved because they, A, feel like they don't know enough, or B, um, they're just they're confused, or they might hear one argument that sounds really good and they just kind of stop there. I think it's really important that um, folks think about what are their values. Um, and I think if a value of yours is to have a strong community, I think that's a big reason to support unions and a big reason to support labor. Uh, because when you have healthy workers uh, and you have healthy learning environments, whether it's K through 12 or higher education, um, you're going to have a stronger community and a safer one. Um, and so I think asking questions, getting involved, um, because I think when you start asking questions and you say, hey, I want to help out, people will point you in the right direction. And you don't have to figure it out on your own or start a whole movement on your own. The movement's already been happening. We're just asking you to join in. Um, and we know there's a way for you to be involved. What can we do uh, to learn more about this struggle and also to educate ourselves and unconfuse ourselves about wider movements uh, against austerity? Definitely. Um, I think one of the first things you can do is visit the WFC website, W F S E. Um, Dot org, I believe, um, and they have a running line of all of the different negotiations they've had with the administration, what's led up to their decision to vote as a whole union on whether or not to strike, and they also have updates about what happens um, after the strike. Um, so that's kind of a, I would say, an official, like if it says it on the website, it's true, um, kind of documentation around what's happening, um, and also great people to get in contact with um, to get um, up-to-date information. Um, as far as larger learnings about austerity movements, um, I think a really great book to read is Shock Doctrine by Naomi, by Naomi Klein. I think that's a really great way to understand on a global context what's happening um, within the private and public sector. Um, and then also understanding um, People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. It has a huge section on unions specifically and how unions um, and specifically more radical forms of unions have been completely suppressed um, physically um, and um, by the police. And I think that's really important to understand because oftentimes people will make unions and make laborers the, the enemy um, because of certain actions like strikes. Um, um, 
or like direct action. But really, when you understand the history of it, you can really see how it's management, administration, people in power and authority, and people with money um, who are really suppressing um, workers. Um, so yeah, I would say those two books are a really great way to start, um, specifically People's History of the United States because it deals directly with where we are and our own history here being on native land um, here. So. And last question, are we going to win? We're going to win. We are. You just watch and we hope to see you out here so you can celebrate with us when we win. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Alyssa. Oh, thank you so much.